ఏమైంది హలో స్లైటర్ A very top, organized by Domes Nalsa and Horizon, the HR club of Domes Nalsa. The theme, as you are aware, is on Prevention of Sexual Harassment Act of 2013, popularly known as POSH Act and your presence here on a harassment-free workplaces. The enactment of Porsche Act in 2013 was a watershed moment in our legislative history, originating from the courageous battle of Banwari Devi and the subsequent Vishaga guidelines. The Porsche today's workshop, aligned with the goals of the Porsche Act, seeks to enlighten all the participants and procedures for filing and to say state that the objective of today's workshop is not merely to create awareness but in fact to kickstart a movement history of commitment to legal awareness and advocacy and we are happy to host this workshop as a testament to our and practical in insights from the industry to initiate constructive dialogues one more time a very very warm welcome to all the speakers a very good morning to all of you present here. I am Nandini. I am the president of uh, the HR club at Nalsa, uh, an activist, widely respected across the, particularly in the domains of mental health and disability studies. Professor commenced her journey as a researcher at the esteemed Justice Bhagwati that led to her selection in the staff. Throughout her career, Professor had made instrumental and she also played a critical role in the international negotiations, especially in drafting the UN Convention of Rights of Persons with Disability, temporary legal academia as well as advocacy. The field of law with her wisdom, experience and relentless pursuit of justice. It's an absolute honor to welcome you here, ma'am. Mike. 
का स्क्रीन मेरे आई हुई तो सब गर्म हाँ बट आई कैन सी नो ओके ठीक है चल मेरे को दिखा दो प्रेजेंटेशन ऐसे आएगा मेरे पास ऐसा आएगा तो अच्छा okay, नहीं उसमें भी आ रहा है दैट शुड कम रिमूव दोज फॉर इट्स ओनली फॉर मी आई वॉन्टेड नॉट फॉर दैम वी हैव आर इवेंट्स इन दिस ऑडिटोरियम लार्जली वी टेन टू डू आर कॉन्वोकेशन हियर बिकॉज वी गेट दोज काइंड ऑफ नंबर्स so it's really very heartening to have so many of you interested in this particular issue and to be with us this morning uh amish when he made harassment act uh which of course he spoke as posh act it's also possible to talk about it as the posh act so in terms of just the law but to talk in terms of somewhere i would say uh you know like you sent it's also to say okay why should we bother with the law the next session is going to tell you about what is the law and the what has been promised or what is being required by the law what i plan to spend with you the time i wish to spend this morning i want to be looking at much much more on why should we really seriously think in terms of preventing sexual harassment should it be only because there is a statute which asks us to do so should sort of inform us in what we should be doing or not so that's basically uh, you could say if, on why should we obey this law or let's say now i'm not even talking about obeying the law why should we prevent this the law of the land but is that a sufficient enough reason because see there's a difference basically a fundamental difference implementation is something which is done from the outside so you follow the law because you are being compelled to follow it and observing the law is when you believe that this is something that should be done it is you yourself are doing it nobody is watching you you're just doing it because it's the right thing should we observe this law not necessarily just you know follow or be led into conforming with the law because that's the implementation that is being sought have you yeah yeah proceed from there on the first slide uh <laughs> other than my name and the title is basically the overview point which i have just made with you where i'm saying that why should we work at preventing sexual harassment i'm saying that your next sessions are on the what and the how i am going to concentrate on a range of reasons and they are not in any way like you know alternative reasons you can cumulatively consider that this could be a reasoning and it's a reasoning which is coming from the inside it's not like because the the, the central government has or the union harassment is something worth looking at Okay I don't that how much of how many of our relationships especially our heterosexual relationships or our relationships which are not like within maybe the family how much of when you are kind of befriending a stranger seems to be happening through harassment you actually believe that you know uh, I just hassling people bullying them diminishing them bollywood has played its own role and so has other popular stuff in this way of creativity so the time that's not what happened but a connection gets formed that that connection is a toxic connection that that can something we don't really worry about and the this factor of that this is the way in which relationships tend to get made is something which uh, or is being offered to us as an option we don't problematize the whole notion of uh, you know that if you are trying to make trying you're saying that you want you know like you're trying is that really a way in which you want to operate 
it's it's a question of that are you going to, are you do you genuinely really think that that's the way in which we should make friends i know that we we've, we've had this entire debate for young juniors now the moment you suddenly think i mean any one of us and especially all of us when we remember our own you know like fresher days there's a certain kind apps but that's the way in which uh you know like a lot of connections between man woman are put up it's not you don't know how to do friendship how to make friends in a manner which is respectful of dosti karna mushkil hai chhedna possible hai because in chhedna there is no there is just a person there is an object you can say what you karna hai so then there is a give take there is some level of that one has to learn that how does one go forward and say i am so and so how are you where are you coming to that everything if you kind of make an overture and you are making a straight forward overture and saying i want to be friends with you how do we receive so i want to sort of literally begin with this conversation by saying that you know somewhere when you are relating or create person who's on the receiving end of it how they feel about it you don't know because it's not a friendship to make any kind of connection through the medium of harassment then there is a certain kind of a environment and i want to change how do we change this way of relating to it is coming from here because sexual harassment happens largely because of the fact that we believe to it's okay agar kya ho gaya why are you being so sensitive na maine kuch days it's not some it's just You, you know you you try to sort of pass it off as that the that in the process somebody has got objectified is something which doesn't come back to the person who's making the comment because you are not on the other hand we have not really worked at ki okay how do we relate with each other that's i mean i i uh, i wanted to sort of because of the all the uh, drama i was having with the laptop and exactly where i should stand and present for to have a you know like an exchange and a question answer and whatever you want to say or your suggestions or your concerns but at any point there but if you want to be you know sometimes it's necessary to clarify right there so if you're feeling that way please free, feel free to do so i mean there shouldn't be an issue on that count that's basically uh, the point i wanted these were the prefatory comments i wanted to make the to us to say relate to someone i been to want to be friend i would say man or woman i would say both but definitely woman if, and if it is not possible is this a route which i am somewhere peer pressured into following is there a manner in which if we are making connection then it's important to say that are we relating or are we and i am not even talking like maybe the comments that you make you know each of these would come within the spell of harassment because all of them are objectifying thing that i wouldn't i i'm not putting it on just like the fact that that exposure is not there for men that is seen as harassment if we can't make a distinction between respectful communication and harassment that's the other level problem is something we need to reflect upon it's also tied up with my the reason why i'm beginning from here is also to do with the because in effect the law is a creation of the state and the manner in which the state thinks about the law and beyond the law then it's like how we want to reflect upon it and at least this morning session the first session of thinks about it but has how you and i need to think about it so the first like i i told you which is in some ways you could say a large amount of first level literature which came in on uh, sexual harassment at the workplace and you can't really have equality of opportunity now the reason why this connection is entry in the workplace it's not just about the fact that you have been hired it's that oh you know like we can demo nearly the, i mean i i um, i think the bullet point is saying so that the first major study on uh, sexual harassment was sexual harassment 
it was it was the and the fact that she was quitting it's not like she is being fired or she's lost the job and stuff she is quitting because of the kind of a toxic environment that is around there so it became like that if you if she is quitting then there's something wrong as such with her you did not look at ki what is causing her to quit thought that this is the sort of workplace you have or this is the manner in which your colleagues are behaving because of the fact that brim ko zarurat nahi hai we don't really need you know hum to we can manage without your earnings and stuff like that you sit at home so the choice make it anymore and at and that's why i'm starting out by saying if we're talking in terms of equality of opportunity then equality of meant for her to be able to retain that job and it's important somewhere because this study demonstrated that you know this is the reason why women off on her own will we did not in any way ask her to leave so you can't say that our practices are discriminatory thing is voluntary or is it that we have not really created you know the the safety that is required for her to continuing i'm also sort of been pointing this that we can't conflate uh you know like being pushed out with quitting because actually you are being pushed out but ostensibly you are quitting so it's possible you know yeah this is what happens when you hire women they are so you know they are so whimsical they are so uh what best to hire women employees but they don't they come and they go they come and they go and that seems to be one doesn't ask that what causes them to go that there is a reason as to why if you are having this constant kind of personal kind of reason if you believe that a woman employee is in some manner going to contribute to your workplace if you believe that the beauty is one of your single largest causes and sometimes it is also and i think that i can very well say that you know to say oh you could file a complaint is easier said than done because the moment you file it comes like oh god you know he didn't really mean it and now she's kind of going to ruin his career so now what should we do so there's a whole choir to be repeating on a constant basis exactly what you think is to be had think is harassment two there would be this entire sexual harassment that will totally destroy his career and so he should be warned and he should be wrapped on wrist and all but somehow the other no win situation you 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 complain you are damned you don't complain you are damned and if we try to address the whole issue of really need to have them but they need to be for those really egregious kind of situations they should be when you know like create workplaces where people can subsist in you know in a certain where you don't need to make a point i am making here and i am sort of saying to you that uh if you want a first level reason i would begin with her as in as i speak with you do i in harassment that women encounter at the workplace but i think we would all be living in fools paradise if we believe that that harassment like it happens to men with disabilities maybe men with you know like uh, sexual choices which are different it happens at several sorts of uh, harass you are on the receiving opportunity the beneficiaries will be more than just women and actually it will be as much as i go forward i would take make the claim that it'll act, everybody would be a beneficiary is is the point i am making and if we think from there then we are doing prevention of sexual harassment not because the law requires us to do it but because that's the right thing to do i mean i i carry on with and reiterating this because i genuinely think that that's where from this conversation should happen the second point i want to make that the negative has been taken off it is also that you have created a positive environment do your best if you're not over, all the time looking over your shoulder if you're not just worried that if you are going to be called for dictation exactly where your boss is going to stand or not stand if you're not concerned in terms of what should i wear or not wear is this particular dress that i am wearing go away then you are necessarily going to concentrate on your work and you're going to give give out your best and think from there so there are of course people who have uh, who have been 
or are on the receiving end of harassment, the moment you sort of like say this is potential victims. So it's like uh, a number of, you know, like, I mean, if you have conversations in, because uh, organizations and were to have a conversation, you would find that there'll be a body of people who just want to invisibilize themselves. Because if I am not seen, I will not be harassed. If nobody sees me, so you go around like one mousy creature who, who wants not to be noticed. Because if you are noticed or if you stand up, then you will be on the receiving end of a certain kind of conduct and you don't, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it may be that some people enjoy being bullies or being loud because it's given a certain kind of social purchase. It's given, you know, and I think this is this, the here I'm clearly addressing too, or a kind of behavior uh, that maybe you may not practice yourself, but if a colleague practices it, a group was to say this is not acceptable, that's when the person draws back, not when the person whom he's harassing is saying so. Because that's part of the pleasure that he's supposed to be harassing and she's supposed to get us upset and disgusted. And if the community around is not questioning it, then you are giving it, you know, encouragement. And it, it's like, a, you know, you're complicit in what is happening. And I am who have been subjected to people who believe that they can't, they, they could be, uh, you know, they might be vulnerable, so better it's to be actively discouraged. Now, why wasn't he given one tight slap? Because if he had been, he would have known this is not on. I am saying from the social group, then in effect, we are uh, letting that person be a bully or a lout for the rest of them, egging him on and giving him bhava. But it's not the kind of human being who's really going to grow and develop. It's going to remain at one level, one chota level gunda and nothing more than that. And that's not a great way to go. So when I'm sort of, uh, I started the talk by referring to building human relationships through harassment. I am saying is that if you oust harassment, if you say this is a line we are drawing, you could also provide an opportunity for respectful human relations. So if we are humans and we're living together, to interact with each other, necessarily there need to be norms by which that interaction can happen. And the reason why we put a lot of stress on consent is it's about saying ask and a yes or a no may come. If a yes comes, wonderful. That's not the way in which relationships are made. But if, and that's why I'm also saying it's equally important that if somebody that you have been asked. Like I would all of the time say, I respect your good taste. Recognize the fact that somebody wanted to be friends with you. And I think that distinction is an important distinction for us. Um, okay, I'm, I'm saying two things. I'm saying one, when you oust harassment, you open the door for respectful relations. And I'm not talking about some of us who possibly have been lucky enough to get those opportunities of having lived in or having studied. A lot of us have kind of like, you know, um, so the first time uh, somebody says, okay, let's have a coffee, yes, cities and small towns and, you know, exposures of different kinds. So misunderstandings in relation to communication tends to happen. Then you sort of, uh, you know, uh, create an opportunity for uh, interacting with warmth and respect. I'm not saying that necessarily each person who wants to befriend you, you want to befriend them. Nor is it. But there is a certain thing like basic civil act with each other, which is respectful of the other. And I am putting forth this to you that if we oust the pathologia, there is that you are interacting, uh, you know, it, it, I, I'm sort of putting forth it at least the possibilities of that. And we start then conversations on. Not on, that if you do this, harassment. Hoga. But it really tells us how to be doing it. So you don't know ki, what is acceptable and what is not. I am saying is that if we want to prevent of the law, but the law... The other point I wanted to make, also, and I think it's, it, it is much more maybe applicable for men, and that, you know, like... Uh, it's been said very often, and there's 
I, I'll come to the joke in a minute, but it's been said very often that violence at the workplace, and not necessarily physical people in the corridor can hear. We don't have a critique of that kind of behavior and saying it's not on. Because the hierarchy is such, the boss shouts at, shouts at the employee, the employee goes home and shouts at the wife, the wife shouts at the child, the child shouts at the dog, and the dog poor fellow goes out and barks. That's the way in which we land up. And it's a certain kind of a sequence or hierarchy of the workplace. From being this disrespectful, violent environment, wherein hierarchy should not, you are the one who cannot raise the voice. It, because it, if it is an asymmetrical relationship, if it is a hierarchical relationship, and if you can't say shut up to the other person, the person who is speaking in this manner is not be permitted to do so. My point somewhere is this, that when you talk in terms of preventing sexual harassment, hopefully it will then carry over to see, you know, when it becomes like a sexual, when you only sort of uh, situate your conversation within sexual harassment, it, it some way becomes that. But if we say harassment is not okay, then we are stop starting to talk in terms of how do we make a, uh, a flourishing, respectful workplace. What are the kinds of behaviors which are no for everybody? And the kind of violence which in the workplace causes domestic violence, or I'm hoping and I don't see like there is any difficulty about hoping, you know, that if you are treated well in your workplace, then you sort of also treat others who, who maybe are in that, that might be the kind of trigger that you may put forth. So I am, I've given you a range of reasons there. I've talked in terms of equality of opportunity, getting respectful human relations, and I'm also saying that don't, we shouldn't be thinking that it will stop just with preventing sexual harassment. The spillover could be for more than just the workplace. This is like a uh, talk that Amish, when he made his uh, introductory comments, spoke about uh, the Bosch Act, spoke about the fact of that we would be through the whole day informing you about what the statute requires. We have colleagues who are going to come and share, put that in place. I just wanted to make this point, and these are all rules of law. I wanted to make this point with you that the rule of law is distinct from the rules of law. The rule of prejudice, saying that there'll be, there'll be transparency, there would be, you know, like, uh, it doesn't matter. It's like, you, we hear this all of the time, no? That however big you may be, the law is above you, so to say. Or we are all equal before the law. But rules of law are the ones which are accompanied by sanctions, a certain amount of compulsion, uh, you know, that this is something that rule of law, on the other hand, has an uplifting quality to it. It's somewhere got a justice component to it. It's talking in terms of or the road street outside, or our city, or our town, and our, you know, our country. We can carry on in this manner. The point I want to somewhere, this rule of law could be facilitated by the state. But I am of the view we will kind of tell the rest of the world that it's the law and only we know about it. All of us have to follow it, so all of us have to think about it. My thing is that, okay, fine, the rules have been created, but the rule that people have to be, it's responsible, responsive people, you know, who have to think about the whole issue and being implemented. My entire conversation is about the fact of why, as people, we should find that we do, that we prevent the, the prevention of, we, pre we prevent sexual harassment. Because that is what will happen if the ICC comes up with this. I am not saying they are not important. Till we are there, we are stuck with it and we have to, we need to know it. We also need to know it because, see, after all, let's, let's be honest. If there wasn't this kind of a mandatory requirement of some kind of posh training, the force of the law has no wire to do this training, this many people from very 
forward till the next till the next complaints committee somebody somebody files a complaint and then you have that entire you know flurry of activity depending upon what is the basic environment in your organization i am saying to you is don't wait for a workplace for these range of reasons whichever one appeals to you more i gave many you could think of any and then proceed from there what sort of positive steps what kind of behavior is taboo in our organization how do we encourage and help people to learn what's a proper way of behaving i mean if it is if it's like you want to call it for not lack of anything better we could sense i mean i think i am sort of putting it from there and i'm saying that's what i would say if an organization and if you were to be thinking in terms of ki shayad wo aurat bhi kuch theek hi keh rahi thi you know because ultimately i don't think human relationships can ever be controlled by the law the offensive in uh you know the kind of respect we demonstrate to each other and the manner in which we create those relationships because not i'm not just talking in terms of sexual harassment i am honestly putting my money for preventing harassment i honestly do think and i think we have not thought enough about it and possibly because it is to if i am what i have to like somehow the other you know get even if i am on the receiving end of contempt and humiliation or or insults to be earning that livelihood i have to earn that livelihood I definitely don't think it is okay and I think it's that that's the connection that we need to be making that no a safe working place must be safe for everyone a respectful working place must be respectful for everyone this is the more egregious variety. but it's not like the men who stay who are on the receiving end of a lot of insulting behavior are very happy staying there and interact they should be happy places at least we shouldn't be uh designing to make them unhappy it may still happen you know i mean i'm not saying that one can totally eliminate unhappiness or khadkenge uh, to you know that they will there will be some level of it will happen that's okay but then you also work out exactly how do we keep which part of this particular workshop asking you to think through the day not just about what the prevention of sexual harassment act is our harassment generally and sexual uh, have you share question suggest comment all is open um because i i don't think you know it's like um, as the speaker or the facilitator uh, should be like uh pass say this to my students that if i am uh, i see every every interaction of learning what you may have to say to me and make me think i think that's what makes this kind of an exchange worthwhile yep i like to say that the presentation what you have given this has actually scared us most of us for brief befriending with the others today post to you because otherwise your voice yeah. is yeah is it okay now yeah better so the question is here like are we talking about harassment so uh is this particular related to sexual harassment as well or it can go beyond this levels wherein we can also treat child is also being harassed in you know the, the the school levels or whatever because in most of the cases when we are talking about innovation when we are talking about uh new things which are coming up in the national education i i, I would want us to confine ourselves to harassment at the workplace workplace okay because if you try to include other sites you know then sexual harassment are also related to each other but to speak in terms of what children are suffering at school is not the agenda for today's conversation i respect that ma'am thank yeah. you yeah thank you for taking us through this uh, rule of law it was definitely uh, very detailed but let's take a practical example especially in the workplace it is very challenging to draw the line because let's say i'm not going into sexual harassment because that is one side of it and somewhat little easier to define as compared to other harassment like shouting or oh, um, the boss says or someone say it's my style of speaking 
but it is making someone uncomfortable. It is my way of telling you take it all in an organization. How we define that line and how we sensitize to our people that this is the line which gets very uh, perceptive based on individuals. So what's your thoughts on that? See, my point to me basically is this, that I am making a distinction. I think that's what my last slide was also doing. Between what I consider to be rules of law and what I am speaking in terms of, you could say, you know, practices of courtesy and civility. Because the moment, the way in which you have drama, my thing more is this, it is like you know, a conversation and to create an environment within which to say, to say, ye mera style hai. To be told if your style is making somebody uncomfortable, then you need to think in terms of reworking that style. They're talking to yourself. You're talking to yourself, you can scream at whatever level and get your, you know, get catharsis. But if you're talking to a constant basis in the manner in which a place operates, over a period of time, people learn. Which is why I'm, see, in the next session, you're going to have uh, Vasudha Nagaraj talk to you about the statute and what it puts forth and how it defines harassment and what's up. In terms of human interactions, which are not necessarily controlled by the law, which are controlled by our, you know, our respective or our reciprocal humanness. And we keep raising it and we work out ways by working, doing conversations on it. See, what is important, and that's I think I want to see that we very often have is, we'll reach the solution, let's firstly acknowledge, ha ye problem hai. Then work out, acha kya ki aja sakta hai. Kya kaha se shuruat ho sakti hai. Where can we start from? It's an important dimension of how we need to consider a con Necessarily it becomes, this is a problem, so what's the law that we need to create for solving that problem? I would say it even outside the law. The law is ultimately an instrument of the state. It's not what you and I make. You can come up with whatever representation. Ultimately, it would depend upon how the state thinks about that issue. Our own interaction that can be. Should we entertain? Pardon? So we, at the end, we should entertain raising a complaint. So that I am saying, you don't call it a complaint. It, begin from there. The moment you call it a complaint, you've gone into the formal system. I'm saying that try to activate complaint. I'm only saying is try to think from outside of that also. Complicate things more. Yeah. So I wanted you to speak about uh, a little more into the non-retaliation and non-intimidation uh, condition at the workplace, which will otherwise, uh, you know, uh, at more extent that will help not reaching to that level of having that complaints in at first place. So sensitizing workplaces, uh, colleagues with non-retaliation uh, thing. So would you please have all this system that we have a committee, we have uh, identified the behaviors, we have uh, organization that you are safe, you can raise the concern. Right, and you will not be facing any difficulties because you raise the concern for yourself being uh, your victim or somebody who's witnessing and raising the concern for somebody's uh, in terms of that create those kind of environments. Not just that if you raise a complaint, no no retaliation would happen, but as far as we try very proactively, that no one has to raise a complaint. You know, like proactively work behave. What is it that I am from a self-reflective mode? You really can't then take the conversation further. I'm only sort of saying, I have seen or the other, a certain polarizing happens. So if we don't worry about situations before the file, that when the wrong kind of behavior happens, what, how are you going to address it? I am not saying that is not required. We're spending the rest of the day talking about it. I'm only saying is also worry about that you create an environment that the right kind of behavior begin from thinking about it in complaint terms. Because the moment we say complaint, even in, in informal saying, Merkwans, to learn to say, Yaar aap wo karte ho na to achha nahi lagta hai. It's a gentler way of saying the same thing, but it's a way to the person you provide that feedback. Some level of processing may happen. 
I am I'm only sort of proceeding from this point of that let's not think of each other as a set of blagards, you know. Let's think of ourselves as humans improving, capable of learning. I am saying if we keep that going, see, it's, it's like the, it's a demon beyond repair. I think that finding should come after many, many more efforts than what we actually put in what should be happening there and stuff like that. I'm not denying it. Because I have always believed that uh, I would want as far as be to try to keep that agency of sorting out my life with me. And try to work out with other colleagues and saying, can we do that for our organization? I feel for an organization to take that as the challenge is something, it's, it's, that's, that's a distinction I'm putting out there. I know when it comes to the law and the returns that you have to file, you will be happy. I am saying is that you have the internal com complaints committee, but create all of these other procedures by which that internal complaints committee can do other things. Does sensitization, <coughs> does interaction, works out, you know, on Prote putting it out, a draft going around, people responding, really conversations begin. How do you agree and disagree? To be able to say, let's agree to dis or I'm going to give you all the gullies I know. That's not the way. To say, Achha, maybe that's how you see it, I don't agree. And you live with the disagreement with the, of the other. No, you're not, sir, because I might be able to hear you. People behind won't hear. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, I would like to hear the other side of the coin, like as you said, quitting the job to losing the job. So, the law point of view, suppose say, uh, I have a case like in a very in the corporate segment, like in a where he is uh, handling the posture uh, related complaints. Being humiliated, raise the complaint to the both the committees. Okay. Uh, before acting the local committee, the central committee is being taken action, they fly back to the location being initiated everything and like you know, being asked of the person, post the person to uh, scenario, he's a unit head and uh, having about 30 plus years in the same company, being joined from fresher to such a higher level position. But the person who raised the complaint is a fresher, joined from uh, college. The maybe that is genuinity is a, uh, we will keep it that side. But uh, the girl now, she's happy in a, uh, this, I, I get it, but I think the next session where the colleague is going to talk in terms of the law and speak about these kinds of complaints may be the uh, more appropriate session for you to ask this question. Okay, as far as, as such, ordinarily, I would say that uh, the process is, it should be your question. Namaste, ma'am. Good morning. Myself, Supriya from Sri Krishna Pharmaceuticals. So, I have just phrased up here so that it can pre policies pertaining to HR policies or uh, like you know maybe has off today. So like I, so just as sit down please. Yeah, just you. as you've had this kind of a meeting and some of the issues I am what should I say uh, regular kind of interactions in the in the organizations which are not complaint linked, which are not because of egregious behavior has happened. To work out a panel and say, okay, okay, fine, you know, like, consider not great. You know, in our own organization, you're not pointing to someone and say, tumne ye kiya. You're saying, this is what we don't want. As far as the requirements, these are other initiatives which start to contribute towards, you know, people really thinking about preventing it to, uh, in this filtered kind of manner what this colleague was saying because evidently he's worried about this you know the the dynamics which has unleashed i am saying when the dire manner and how to make for a safe working not okay for everybody and how do we then reconfigure behaviors you know, sort of things. it will also mean that some i did not really somebody then you need to look at how should i say it this is what I was trying to say. How should I say it? You start working on formulations. 
बिकॉज देन यू आर कंसर्न विद कि अच्छा ठीक है तुमने यू नो लाइक गेम ऑफ यू नो हाउ मेनी पॉइंट्स दैट यू कलेक्टेड अगेंस्ट यू इन योर फेवर एंड हाउ डू यू इन कैच दैन लेकिन सो मेनी वेज इन विच वी कैन बी दैट्स हाउ वी वर टॉट एज बच्चाज नो यू नो and it keeps happen and say okay this is not this was horrible like what formulation i used what should i have done and such breaking barriers and we're not demon the moment we polarize a situation moved saying this is our agenda and hence you're going to proceed i am trying to present to you the creation or the necessity of creating a positive agenda and not just only act on activated let it not be that it's a, it's a fact that women have because of the so the workplace has to can reconfigure itself full responsibility i don't think that uh, what is good or bad behavior should be sort of like censure your employee you can do not okay and i think it needs to be said i i have always believed that you know uh, patriarchy is not just a problem of women it's as much a problem of men because the role that patriarchy has allotted to men is a role that they should reject to be asked to be like to be saying that because you are a patriarch you have an obligation to be rude and because you are supposed to be the patriarch you can't feel bad or you can't cry not to expanded what i was speaking on in saying that i am definitely saying that Uh, sexual harassment is egregious and the point i was making in terms of to let's not conflate driving somebody out with saying that person has quit let's not do that when i'm so vulnerable groups and i think uh, there are as many men who are vulnerable as there are women that's that's a thrust point Hello ma'am good morning uh, my name is Tabassum I am from Apollo Telehealth this is uh, just to maybe add a point as you said this is an interactive how to interact with other people or start conversation but it is also as much important as to not label please don't make such kind of a comment it's not appropriate a lot of people around you who are actually enjoying label you as uh, you know a bright person or a person who does not know how to chill out or calm down no, that's exactly what i sort of said no that this business of that absolutely ma'am and while others are in so see the other thing which i also had said when i was speaking i had said to you that the reason why that kind of behavior uh gets the sort of because it gets that kind of social purchase because it gets that social purchase that it carries on I am exactly making that point that you know that business of ticking off, and if you go to talk like this, or this is this is how you. If you were to recognize it, not every time it is happening because the guy is out to do offensive behavior. Sometimes looking very nice, and I would like to go out with you for a coffee, and you consider that harassment. It's not okay. You cannot go. You don't have to go. You can just have to say, no, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. Khatam. But usko bhi agar aap harassment bologe. तो फिर आप दोस्ती कैसे करोगे यू नो इट्स इन आई एम दैट्स व्हाई आई सेड बोथ द थिंग्स टुगेदर आई एम आई एम इन टोटल एग्रीमेंट विद यू एंड आई एम आई एम सेइंग दैट इट्स जस्ट नॉट ओके वी हैव टू लाइक क्रिएट न्यू जोक्स इफ योर एंटायर रेपोटुआर ऑफ जोक्स इज ओनली अबाउट दैट स्टूपिड वाइफ और द हॉरेबल मदर इन लॉ और द कलीग हु डजंट नो हाउ टू ड्राइव और कैन नॉट डू एनीथिंग प्रॉपरली I think it's about time we we made another set of because I or I mean of course you've got a lot of feminist jokes coming in. I don't think that I'm actually saying that after all humor is something which comes from it's an invitation to creativity. Karo kon mana kar raha hai? Thank you. I agree with you. I mean I'm, I I'm not at all denying that. Uh, Professor Amita Dhanda for such a wonderful start for what we have planned for today. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, before you go, go, go down, uh, as a small token of uh, love from our side, uh, we have a small token of appreciation. Uh, this is Sai Chen, Vice President of uh, HR Club, handing over a small.
Charan was handling the entire communications and marketing of the event. For that, there was a session planned uh, by Advocate Vasudha uh, on operationalizing, uh, in fact, the legal aspects of the Post Act. So
slides. Okay. Ah, so this this person. <laughs> so this person will load it. Here. Where is my?
So that we can start the next session. Morning again. I am Nitika and I am the secretary of Horizon the HR Club. I am extremely delighted to introduce the next speaker for the day, Advocate Vasudha Nagaraj, who has 20 years of experience practicing across courts in Hyderabad. Today, ma'am is here to Shanees. Ma'am, we are honored. My pleasure, ma'am. This is not worth Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the Department of Management Studies at Nalsar for inviting me to speak to so many of you. I don't know where you all are from, but I'm surely you are working across companies in Hyderabad and understanding about sexual harassment. Some aspects of this will be painful particularly to the men who are sitting here. But please, don't take it personally, don't take it too literally, and don't think it is target. So please take it with, with I mean, uh, please uh, don't feel insulted, don't feel humiliated, okay? Take it, take it as part of education. Okay, I'm going to start now. There's some, uh, something, any subject on the law with a story. I don't know if, with, if uh, Professor Danda, uh, what happened? This is not coming. It's, it's not coming here. This was there, that, that didn't come. some small technical glitch. Second slide, and Ayyo. Second slide. Okay, you can see the face of this woman. Men and women should come and attend these sessions. It is, today there is a discussion on sexual harassment. But it's unbelievable that this entire discussion, uh, that woman, that, uh, that woman with a gungat you saw there, so it started with her. She was a satin working for the uh, Rajasthan uh, Women's Development Program. Her name is Bhavri Devji into it. I'll only say that she was subjected to rape during the course of her employment. So the women's organizations picked it up and said that this was a rape that happened during the course of her employment. And the Rajasthan government did not provide any support for her when she was struggling to get her complaint registered in the police station, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to depose in the trial, it happened to her, and that it was not something which happened when she was trying to stop child marriages in that village in Rajasthan. So, women's organizations petitioned the Supreme Court and said that this is something which happened during the course of employment. The employer cannot say that this is between you and that uh, co-worker or your boss and we have nothing to do. Uh, just have this where the Supreme Court said that because you all know that there are several domestic disciplinary, that there is no responsibility taken by the employer when the 
women employees of their organization are subjected to sexual harassment so from there came the vishaka guidelines or oh, they moved to the next slide uh, vishaka guidelines and in the year what is this sir hello you are job <laughs> no 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 you don't do you don't do but this act so now uh, uh, see sexual harassment actually is a crime even before uh, bavri devi's case and even at the time of the vishaka guidelines sexual harassment is a crime no man can go to station and all that is there but what happened with the vishaka guidelines and subsequently this act this law was that women one the the employer should have a responsibility the woman should have an option of of getting relief of the complaint being addressed within the organization itself going to a police station none of us want to go to a police station we don't want to go to police station we don't want to go to a hospital as far as possible we say kuch uh, give me some medicine and try to try to settle it or we'll go to a street side doctor and say let us settle it we don't want to go to the big hospitals we don't want to go to courts we don't want to go to police stations station and get a complaint registered if it was a smaller group i would have asked how many of you all have been to a police station how many to get a complaint registered in a police station and more so in cases of sexual harassment or rape or all these things more than the then who has perpetrated if she was at that place what clothes she was wearing or why she was why she took that cab at that time of the night or why she messaged him at uh, 10:30 pm in the night so there are a hazard questions that are asked of women see places i mean it's not easy or was to make it slightly easier for women who suffer harassment in their workplace okay so that was the spirit of this law that is the spirit of this law okay now what is sexual harassment where does it occur does it occur so it occurs sorry now i looks i don't know if you all are able to see it but it occurs in the homes walking on the road so several of us don't even want to walk on the roads because there will be whistling or this and that so there is these are all inbuilt deep down inside and we take certain roads we avoid certain roads when we are walking on this particular road we will wear a doctor in you know which we consider before we set out okay so there are, there is when you are traveling in buses and autos or whatsapp there is much more sexual harassment today on your smartphones rather than on the road okay now what is the sexual harassment this can happen simple if i in case ask the women sit harassment i will be sitting here till it's not at all an exhaustive list of workplaces touching pinching staring that is in fact the other day i heard that if you look and we don't know what that 18 seconds is it is only women who will know unfortunately sadly so you can know you can even know it on the back on your back when somebody is staring at you okay so touching pinching staring and direct okay there is this huge i i mean there is there is a spectrum of colors in which sexual favors can be demanded so i am just giving the title of a chapter it can be a chapter demand for sexual favors making sexually colored remarks this is again another huge chapter which can take another 50 pages of a book okay i i'll not go into what what exactly all that is showing pornography even this can be a very diffuse kind of thing it can be direct it can be indirect there can be a hint it can be direct it can be indirect just a joke don't don't be you should learn to take it in your stride but it's a joke and it's a 
sexually colored joke. So how do we talk about all this? And spreading rumors. That is also part of sexual harassment in two pages. But you all know and I know what kinds of sexual harassment can happen in what settings. Okay. Now, sexual harassment can't eat it in other ways too. Monitoring. There is something called in a workplace. When a man to the woman, the woman begins. And that is creating a hostile workplace. There, on the face of it, apparently, there will be no sexual harassment. But they can forget that this man said some forget. The man is feeling very insulted. And that is when, and particularly when the man is in a higher position than the woman. And sometimes men who are not even in higher positions can create a hostile workspace. So you are monitored. The woman employee can be monitored. She may be blamed unnecessarily. Or the origin of this, like the where the Ganga is flowing from. No, where is the origin of the Ganga? We keep thinking. Where is the origin of this? Hostile workplace, you will not be given leave. Your leave letter will not be sanctioned easily. Or your permissions, if you are, ba if you are ex uh, I mean, if you are in the class four sector of your office, you will not be given permission. You can leave, uh, you, you're all the, these are not just something from the textbook. These are all women who have come and spoken about how they have been harassed when they said no to OK? So these are the hostile workspaces. Then more in the hostile workspace, you are criticized, you are insulted in public, or you are excluded from group activities, or there are sarcastic remarks, rumors about you, jokes, or you are given too little work or too much work. You are either overburdened with works of various, um, I mean, how does one put it? It's like a capillary system. One capillary here, one capillary there, one capillary. So things like this, it's an, it's, it, it keeps circulating like this. And often, our, our, any crime about women, be it rape, be it, uh, be it um, uh, woman in doubt, did I do something wrong? It begins there. We may be very educated, pernicious as that. It, there is an invisibility about this violence. It is widespread and it is the most powerful violence. It's not decoity or murder, which in my opinion, it's not decoity or murder, which is that. So it is like that, it's, it's, it's an undercurrent. And our society, the education that we have received in our society, the silence about sexual harassment is such that, did I dress necessarily, sit and talk to him? Did I do something with him? It was my mistake. So it begins there. It was my mistake. And it takes a lot of uh, depression and convincing yourself and it's happening from that other end. So it's like that. So let's not think that women are super confident and what you are being, how you are being targeted. It's not only men who don't know, it's also women who, who, no, who can complain? Is it only the, the worker who has the best contract with the company who can complain? No. It can be regular workers. It can be temporary workers, it can be daily wage workers, contract workers. Today, all our companies, so much of housekeeping staff, some of them do not even have direct contracts with their companies. They are brought, they are engaged through contract worker. So even if that woman, being a contract employee in the canteen or doing the toilets and the uh, uh, housekeeping, even she has a right to complain. 
and of course your regular workers the managers there are several uh, women who come as apprentices and are uh, and work with senior lawyers it's such apprentices also who have a right to come free there was uh, there was a staff there and prior to that there was another former chief justice of workers and of course students but since you all are in companies i am not speaking about the student teacher relationships now uh, we have of course private organizations which is where all of you come from corporations hospitals universities and colleges non governmental organizations ashrams so many of our gurus are now being uh, are now being charged with cooperative societies and our own homes also domestic workers have you ever thought about this and all that you have a uh, you have a uh, boards at least now some companies the top companies have this board saying uh, sexual harassment committee 1 2 3 4 domestic workers in our houses there is no board telling them that yes you can complain but uh, sexually harassed then we can ask her to complain go to a police station or go to the local complaints committee i will not swear i am sure all your this is the biggest issue when to complain ideally as per the law and one all of 2002 and then finally in june 2023 2021 22 23 you will decide enough is enough i have to complain so you have to write down say that i have been from we do not complain there is i mean we either try to go and complain we can complain to complain about theft it's so easy to complain about murder i say it is so easy to complain about murder but it is connected with on it with so a woman thinks twice has refused it then there is a hostile workspace then her her uh, her job is getting affected there is that all this is coming from that incident of harassment that happened 2 years back the law says 3 months very nicely law says 3 months but the sexual harassment law also says that you can explain the delay please explain the delay why you kept quiet and the supreme court and generally our courts have understood that complaining thankfully not all the judges understand some understand it is still our responsibility to say it's not that there is a delay in registering a complaint of sexual harassment when there is a theft in your house we all with great um, nice courage and self righteousness we march into a police station and say oh there is a theft in our house but that same kind of marching doesn't happen when there is sexual harassment so there is plenty of delay almost 95% of complaints there is delay and when there is delay the other side i will make a complaint after 2 years and that is the time when the coworker or by employer has said that i am not working properly so there is this there is this complex interplay there is that he will say i am not working properly i am coming late i mean the woman is coming late or the woman is uh, not taking too many leaves or leave work properly not giving it's it's like this often and the man to cover up his conduct whereas she is alleging sexual harassment the issue of sexual has not to delay its place then it will move into something else and delay is never okay because we will not complain about theft after 3 months to make a complaint about sexual harassment but as far as possible avoid the delay as early as possible okay avoid the delay once there is a delay it starts working against you the act allows for delay 
In fact, the, the 2020 or 2019, when was it? 2018, there was a major Me Too movement. How many of you have heard about the Me Too movement in the country? Wonderful, wonderful. So against the, a Hindu journalist, Hindu is a newspaper which we all read, 20 years after the harassment, that still there were complaints. I would say let's not wait 20 years because we, we don't know what we will be after 20 years. Women counseling women, if, if, there is, if it is becoming difficult, please lodge a complaint, a complaint. How do you draft a complaint? The best of the lawyers don't know how to draft a complaint. Dates, dates and time of the harassment. First, describe yourself, who you are, what you are. Even to the inter, make it too long or don't make it too short. Ideally, a complaint has to be, it should be readable. Try to describe the harassment as much as possible, okay? Then, much of the harassment nowadays is happening on where? Our smartphones, okay? So, try to, uh, try to take screenshots, messages like that come, take screenshots of the messages, okay? And definitely you would have uh, shared those, uh, those they are called as witnesses. I am also saying that often sexual harassment, we harass people uh, in public view. We don't. It has to be done in certain secrecy and certain, now we have to maintain some secrecy for sexual harassment. So it happens within closed doors. And often there are several ways. If it happens on messages, well and good. But it can also happen in a physical setting. Where incident. Sharing the incident with a coworker or with somebody, sending a message, sending an email, I am being remember. The manager's small cubicle. How do I talk about this? Send a message to your friend. Share about it. Be it in domestic violence, be it in sexual violence, all these kinds of violence have very few. There's nobody who has witnessed this. Sometimes you will also, if you raise your voice and you talk about it, quietly there will be two other women who will come and say, we were also harassed. Then, sir, what is it? Sorry? Later you can uh, ask a question. We have enough time for discussion. Okay? Which topic, sir? Uh, okay. I think it is, yeah, please, can you please explain that? Yeah, as it is, we are sitting and listening to this. Now we don't want a repeat of this. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. When nobody is there, so uh, you said that ki you can give a message it means uh, some co-worker, you just... Uh, Times women suffer in their own hearts, in their own stomachs, okay? We keep it here. Mostly women or with their relatives. But in a workplace, it will be with your co-worker. So, message the co-worker. Don't let in an email, send, you may have any, send a nice message to your friend. I am troubled, this man is troubling me, the whatever, whatever. So once you send that message, domestic inquiry. It, it you must not it. be a voice, right ma'am? Message itself, text message. A text message or a voice message. <laughs> yes. sure, okay. Sure, so you. I am kind of uh, skimming over the surface. <laughs> Madam. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, ma so here I have, uh, I see there is another challenge when I'm just sharing it with my co-worker, taking the see, I mean, does it call off a privacy law breaches because if no. the witness, I mean, the co-worker doesn't come up or he doesn't or she that doesn't That is the share. next stage. Mm -hmm. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. As of now, I am being harassed. Yeah. And Quite naturally, we will go and tell a friend. So they go and say, that girl is being harassed. Slight problem is there. No, but I'm speaking about myself. Yeah, personal, I mean like. In short, is for the inquiry. Yeah, I understand. Ah, that but is not. But 
before you do that you should ask that if i tell no my job will go gone kiss so only when that because it's job it's a job it's not easy see see the difficulties even though we may have a domestic enquiry within our office setting there also everything you have as who was with me much we should tell if we don't tell it doesn't work so there is a when uh, the internet will be full of oh women have a right to complain there are internal committees oh men are suffering yes yes men are suffering lot of trouble not easy but there are times in life when women decide and i have seen this in my practice i also tell them why akka go no go get take a transfer i am women's rights lawyer to complain i am having sleepless nights if i complain that will be therapy for me and irrespective of the risk look at that bhavri devi ordinary village woman we think village women don't know the law don't know where anything is don't don't have a knowledge literacy that village woman after a gang rape walks alone to the police station and complains so we discount inside i have to complain sometimes you complain for yourself sometimes i have seen women saying that if i don't complain madam there are so many other women in my office who are also suffering they are unable to complain at least i have the so it's it's these kind of circumstances in which a complaint is made witness you are right there are issues a job all these problems are there but you have one has to negotiate it is a struggle any any uh what does one it is a fight and in our country it is still not easy as soon as you complain things will not start who are now deciding that they will complain come what may and they are fighting to describe the nature of the harassment at the names of the people with whom you shared this and if there is a delay speak about the delay what is the time duration for a delay like what is the tenure as per the statutory requirements ah the law says 3 months me to movement so that is when the hindu newspaper also took it as a prestige issue and said i will get uh, register this complaint even if it uh, it is 20 years old but our companies accenture or uh, whatever what try to ignore it i try to set it aside it actually happened in may 2022 i told him and i wanted to complain but i i am unable i i was i didn't have the courage to complain so there are ways in which you explain your delay losing a job with great difficulty you would have gotten into what is that infosys or accenture or even a government office i have seen government employees thinking twice and that thinking twice thrice for take an ostrich which buries its head in the sand no you are hoping that it will disappear but it doesn't disappear so in that sense misused by any of which uh, i'll come to misuse okay. oh <laughs> last chapter of my presentation is only misuse don't worry at all uh, uh, it's just a addition to what he said you mentioned that i uh, the complicate this uh, from a conspiracy to a actual complaint i would ah, misuse I, this also comes under misuse end of yeah. the story yeah Thank first you. of all let us talk about what sexual harassment is what we can do then we will talk about misuse okay i'm seen was kbm madam yes i have two i need two clarifications number one is uh, place of harassment uh, came up in uh, while discussing the uh, film industry sexual harassment yeah. and even for instance there is a there is a there is a dinner meeting yeah. an office meeting camp or whatever what is that language of your ah yes off-site. that is your language off site something you all have gone so that is also part of your employment 
Now, just because of his responsibility, you have gone to offshore part of your office responsibility, or or there are you. But please come to my hotel room. Now that in the film industry thing, so the, the, it is dispersed. And today, much of our employment is also dispersed. We don't have a proper office setting. And much of it also happens on the phone. Now yeah. that is also part of. Yes, you are right, madam. Second thing, uh who is the wrongdoer also know about the impact. If we uh, suppose any uh, co-worker misbehaved with a female employee, okay. So the co-worker knows about the consequences. If the, it is going to be proven based on the post act, uh, he will be punished and he, will may, he may lose the job and all. Instead of fabricating the evidence and to message the co-worker to share the information to the family member, why don't he, why don't she, told directly to the wrongdoer why if you are doing like this you are going to be please you want to ask a question oh, if i if i don't finish my presentation they'll kick me out here at uh, le uh. yeah but, hey there's a mic right there everybody should know what you are asking so as we are talking about me too movement so i just have a question like how this me too movement helped for the lane how this Me Too movement brought up? To do cases within your office space, nobody knows about it. What Me Too movement did for men were it is the discussion. That woman is complaining, that woman is complaining, this woman is complaining, this woman is complaining, that rural woman is complaining, that office assistant is complaining. Probably I can also complain. That women's issues right from 1973 when the Mathura rape again uh, that will be another end of the day session and otherwise where is the education for all of us do we sit and talk about all this do we sit and talk about all this do our textbooks tell us all this do our college textbooks tell us no this is always it is there is secrecy we don't talk about this today Thanks to the Posh Act, uh, we at least have these kind of sessions where we can speak openly about all this. But otherwise, where do we speak? So the on student-teacher relationships, co-workers, uh, bosses asking employees, women employees to come to the hotel room to discuss, why should you call the woman employee to a hotel room? Why should you call? Why should you call after hours? So these were several questions that were discussed across companies. Everybody read this. It is on TV today. We are having films being made. We have commercials being made. That is the contribution of the Me Too movement. Now let me get back to my PowerPoint. Otherwise, I'll go on. OK. What are the reliefs? Now, OK, we have this woman who has made this complaint. Now, uh, what are the uh, interim reliefs? The law says that there are certain interim reliefs that you can three months, uh, it will take six months, sometimes it takes one year. But in the interim, immediately, what are the reliefs? The punishment will not be given immediately. It shouldn't be given. One, they have to inquire through the complaint. So in the interim, the woman can seek a transfer to another department. She can seek leave, up a maximum of nine. Should not be, if he is your boss, he should not be uh, allowed to write your confidential report. You think after having made a complaint, he'll write, be allowed to write my confidential report. And he should not report on my work performance. These are the things when he happens to be your boss. Obviously, I don't need to say anything about this. We all know what happens. Here, this is what I am coming to. Somebody asked, the act also allows for a conciliation. Before one moves into the, the, um, the, the big end, I am so sorry, I will not repeat this. I am sorry. There are several men 
wall, but I think I ended up staring at you. I am sorry. There are several men who come and say, or tell the for this kind of conciliation. But whenever a woman makes a complaint, she, some women may settle, some, there's the fear of losing your job. You either, you either settle, there are cases where the men come forward and say, please, she's even forced to withdraw. So this conciliation thing has to be handled very carefully by our system is, we don't want to hear about these things. Oh, we, our company is a nice big family. We just don't harass any other. We, we are just so nice to each other. She is my sister, he is my brother. Be, be between sister and brother in workplaces that something like this can happen. But there is also, now we come to the inquiry committee. Conciliation has failed. Man says, nothing doing. I was, she's not working properly. I just gave her a show cause notice and now she's coming up with the complaint of sexual harassment. Committee should have a minimum of four members, should, if uh, possible, and should be, an, and one of those committee members should be an external member. Naito office, office, log bait ke, abba, this woman of Pairi committee, be it a court or be it an end. It can't be one-sided. Her eyes are blindfolded. Why? Because I don't want to see who you are. Whoever you are, I, I should give you tribal. It doesn't matter to me. He should be there in the internal committee. If you are not impartial, you become partial. You become you. How long thing? I will not go too much into it. Basically, the woman submits the complaint, the man is asked for all the, uh, the harasser man has to, can cross-examine the woman's witnesses, but sometimes the woman about how to do this thing. There are, there are several, uh, it's almost like a court, like a quasi-court. Thoda drama is come, but it's like a court only. So there is write a report and gives a recommendation. We find, we find evidence against this man or we don't hear, decides whether a punishment should be given or not. Committee doesn't say this kind of punishment should be given. It is for the employer to act. Sometimes, several times in our companies, committee gives a recommendation, okay? So what are the kinds of punishments? You all only read. The most, uh, the, the lowest penalty, that's the ladder of penalties. <clears throat> Gosh, act, but doesn't prevent it may be right if you to look from elsewhere, trying to look into bathrooms, trying to use cameras to look at women, all that stalking, some to take action against him. But if he is still uh, uh, harassing you, please go to the police station. So an ideal, we don't know how many of them are there, but generally it is the woman who decides that it's not enough to the police station. Okay, so all this is there. I don't know how many of y'all, here I'm taking a small break from the legal aspects. I don't have much time. <clears throat> One fifteen, isn't it? Oh, so, ha, uh, can any one of you sing this song? I don't want to, I don't want to play it here. Can any one of you s sing this song? Can any one of you tell me what this song is? Disturb, disturb, chestano. In fact, the title of the song itself is Disturb, Disturb, Disturb. And this is so beautiful. It's all so beautiful. He's, uh, he's dancing so well. He's, um, he's, um, I mean, he's sure enjoyment. So what I want to say is, 
that we may not have, po we don't have any positive education about how to be with women. But this kind of education that is coming from films like this, it makes it normal. It is fun, sexual harassment. But it is this messaging that is there, part of all our minds. We will not even possible, and it is made so beautiful with songs like this. It, it has become part of our DNA. Sexual harassment or violence. Adavari Matalku Arthale Veru. You all remember na, that old NTR song? How many of you remember that song? There as part of our film industry, a very popular song of our film industry. Adavari Matalki again is the foundation of much of sexual harassment. When a woman says no, she means a no. But very, I mean, very rarely, no, in fact, many men also accept it as a no and back off. Let me say many men back off, but many men also don't. In fact, that is what comes in, you know. For that is the foundation of all sexual violence in our society. I am I am going a little too. Some men are aware. Some men don't care. They think it's it's my uh, Mahesh Babu's films, and Mahesh Babu is all the time saying that if I were not to harass you, in fact, many of you will know that dialogue also. If those are the kind of Mahesh Babu dialogues. In fact, all our film heroes make dialogues like this. They think it is fin. In fact, that word should be banned. What is teasing? It is affecting, impacting women's lives. The workers by their family honor and all that. That this woman should get justice. They, they suffer. So we have all kinds of men here. Again, to each other. But this is something demeaning. But they end up doing these things. They will not talk about it. There is no... F and films like uh, 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 that businessman or uh, this disturb, disturb, tell us that it is, it's normal, yeah. It's part of our lives. Take it. Come on. Don't be so silly. Don't be so sent to. No. We can't. It's not possible. It is violence. We, unless we break the silence, if we break the silence, if we speak to each other, if we act, if we make complaints, and also get educated. So the only option for us is break the silence. We need to know the law, but and open for questions in whatever time we have. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question. Where, where, where? Here, who, who, who? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of the ICC pro proceedings that happen, in, in if someone complains, should the external committee member be part of all of the proceedings? Yes, all the, the committee is valid only if all the four members or five members or seven members are there. Otherwise, it's not a valid committee. Okay. Ah. Social for pet culture, and or have the right to monitor. Different type of committee should be... Company should have an IC. And in that IC, be it a contract worker or a regular worker or a manager can come and complain. And both the, uh, the uh, employer who has a responsibility of instituting a internal committee to do this, to give this... Same platform? Contractor... Because, see, contractor uh, madam, my question is here is that Every contractor has to take a labor license. Correct. Okay. So, e generally for housekeeping and things like that, we have workers coming into that working situation. It can be a regular worker within the office who is attacking, uh, harassing this contract employee. So, there can be, employer is responsible. Thank you, madam. Ma'am? Uh, yes, so sorry, this light is coming in between. Yeah. In fact, you all can switch off this now. 
So ma'am, the employers are so open uh, and they are equal opportunity providers. So we see LGBTQ community also getting hired and added to that uh, community when they are hired by an employer under a posh. See, uh, I, I can't, I can only speak, their complaint has to be equally taken on record and the same process applies to them. Perfect That's it. Perfect man, thanks. Another, Ma may I? Sorry. Let us, yeah, let sure, us sure. Thanks. move. Thanks. I think somebody has to yes. see the, who shall is I, coming. Shall I, ma'am? No, no, she has. Uh, oh, she and I. Witness part where we were talking that uh, my question here is can a witness make a complaint anonymously till the proceedings start? It's a very tempting question <laughs> but it would be difficult because sometimes a witness may come forward, a co-worker may come forward to make a complaint but if the original complainant doesn't support then it will be a problem. But to, uh, to, I think the witness can uh, anonymously or by, with her name should make a complaint, but in a soap. Agreed. My second question, ma'am. After all the proceedings are done and guidelines mentioned in the act for safeguarding the identity of the victim, and if yes, are we following that as of today? See, that's a dicey question. It's very difficult and for others. Agreed. On the other hand, the identity of the victim has to be safeguarded, no doubt about it. But if it is a small workplace, if it is a big workplace, it will get diffused. You will not, anonymity is, um, is uh, protected. But if it's too small a workplace, these things don't remain a secret. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. And after that, Please, somebody make note of the questions. Good afternoon. No, no, sir, sir. Yes, ma'am. I promised him. Yeah. <laughs> ma'am, myself, Kishore. Uh, ma'am, uh, there are two questions. One is like, uh, after uh, giving a punishment lawyer, uh, the recommendation, recommendation is given, the posh committee may say that that possibility is also there. But, but X. Ma'am, one more question. Sir, like we, will, we will follow it up outside because there are several others. Sir, there is somebody there who raised their hands. Ma'am, it oh, means so many questions. Ma'am. Yeah, uh, the con uh, contents of the complaint outside, sir. Please, I promise to speak to you. Right, okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Murthy from one of Somebody the else? Pharmaceutical company. Ah, Papa, Mirande, Miro. You and then you, okay. Uh, Sir, please, I can't hear you properly. When we have a recommendation, like you said that from starting from... See, you, will, you would have had a report. You write a report. Yes. And in that, you say that this violence has been very severe. Uh, but, yes. And based upon that, convey the severity of what the woman has suffered. You should convey. Yeah, once we convey the severity, like how... Sir, to see sir, the severity. That will also happen. Sure. One more question, ma'am. Five more minutes only. One question, sir, please. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, sir. No problem. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, be uh, because I mean, in some of the companies where I work, is the judgment or the decision. Sorry, sir. Say, yeah. come again. The HR management would have complained to the external uh, members. Legally, that, HR management. Uh, as far as possible, women should be there. The chairperson should be a woman. That is the way the uh, uh, committee will be constituted. Yeah. Sir, that's it, sir. Please. Uh, Others are. Hi, Woman, please. Here, either the employers of the complaint, whether that will case, but it must be a lie. Let's collect it to the court now in Hyderabad, in the state of Telangana. Uh, if you are unhappy with the punishment given by the employer, you can and look at the silly warning that they. Uh, it's 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 a wide thing. That is who the who, Hi, you, sir. You and you. Yes, sir. Yes. That one of our posh with the external stakeholder outside the organization. So in that case, madam, what being your organization, what should be our step? Number one, in that case, she has denied to take it forward. How being your organization, uh, how we... Else comes an auction person has to take. That poor woman has now said, because of family issues, I cannot continue it. But it has happened in the course of... Yes. From the internal complaint. The High Court saying, Prince Opportunity 3 says, 
without exception one fellow comes and does theft we say another fellow came and did theft but all those misuses we never come up and sit here and talk about it but when women do something this way or that way we fall upon them like a ton of bricks that is one thing second thing is i spoke about find evidence so when you don't find evidence the committee says that we will not give a we are dismissing your complaint we will not ask case no i couldn't bring the evidence and and harassment of this kind doesn't get thirdly the best way to discredit a complainant is to say that you have filed a false case the best way to discredit a a complaint in the larger society also against domestic violence section 498 misuse 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 but isn't a check bounce case misused how many documents we keep writing how many dot highlight it as much as we highlight this so let us not start from the misuse end of the corridor let us speak about the millions of women who are not able to speak about it or not able to get justice so as a full time teacher i can see this that at the end of a session if people are smiling and have more questions it can only mean that the session was a great success thank you so much vasudha ma'am for accepting our invitation and conducting such an engaging and insightful session uh, we have a small token of appreciation for you i request uh, a pravachana she is and she is the assistant secretary of our hr club who are conducting the event pravachana has been uh, in charge of all the food arrangements that you are seeing today now we close uh, for the lunch session the lunch is arranged in the maze and also please feel free to take photographs there is a selfie display a selfie stand that is kept outside please feel free to take pictures and tag us 